Right now at 6.30, we're tracking a couple of crime alerts in Lexington this morning where two T-Mobile stores are broken into. Also, a hiker is recovering after being rescued from a Clark County ravine. And police have charged a man with murder days after a body was found in a Madison County Creek. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is early on this Monday morning. Hope it's off to a great start for you and hope you had a fabulous weekend. There was some decent weather for us. Things going to take a bit of a change as we head into our work week. Let's uh, hear about it with Micah Harris. Yeah, we're pretty dry this morning, afternoon, and evening. We'll start to see a few showers, a few rumbles of thunder. Is we actually have two systems approaching us: one from the south, one from the west. And that one from the west is a line of showers at this moment, really falling apart. So losing that big piece of energy back toward the west. But then we have a little bit of moisture streaming northbound from the southern zones. So those two interactions later on will give us at least the chance as some showers and thunderstorms. There's your look, 50s and 60s. Feels great outside. You will not need a coat today. 76 degrees with a few storms later on this afternoon and off into the evening. Now, overnight and in, into tomorrow, that's when you start to see that widespread rain, and it sticks with us for quite some time. I'll show you how much rain we are expecting in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Micah. We have new information this morning about a hiker who had to be rescued in Clark County. The man fell into a ravine last night near Halls on the River. That's off Athens Boonesboro Road. WKYT's Sean Moody is live in Clark County with the details on the man's rescue. Good morning. Good morning, Rebecca. Firefighters say this was a really challenging rescue. They were faced with steep terrain, a lot of water. In the end, it took about three hours for them to get this man out of there. Firefighters say it happened around 7 o'clock last night at Harrods Creek Preserve Falls. The falls are about 45 feet tall. They say the man was on his way down from the top when he fell about 25 feet down to the bottom. They say he had multiple serious injuries. Rescuers faced an uphill battle getting him out. They say the terrain there is really steep. They had to put all their skills to work in order to get the man out. Yes, we had to use different types of rescue in order to get the patient out. Uh, there was times where we had to use rope rescue to belay the man down, steep inclines. Uh, we were in the water a few times where we had to cross the river multiple times just because that was the best way to get the patient out at that time. Now, this involved rescuers from the Madison County Rescue Squad, Winchester Fire Department, and Clark County Fire Department. From there, they were able to get that man to an area near Halls on the River. At that point, they put him on an ATV and took him to a bridge near the Madison Clark County line. That's where an Air Methods helicopter airlifted this man to UK Hospital this morning. We're not sure exactly how he's doing. Live in Winchester, Sean Moody, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Sean. Well, here's a question. Could two early morning break-ins be connected? That's what police in Lexington are trying to figure out after someone broke into two T-Mobile stores this morning. The first crime happened just before 5 o'clock on Richmond Road. WKYT's Mark Barber is there live now to explain what police are saying about these two crimes. Good morning, Rebecca. And police say that this T-Mobile store on Richmond Road has not been victim to this kind of crime for the first time. They say that this is the third time this has happened here in less than three weeks. Police say that they um, it's happened after 5 a.m. all of these times and it comes when these burglars smash through a back door. Now police say just a few minutes after the burglars hit this T-Mobile store, they targeted a Nicholasville Road store breaking into a T-Mobile store there. Now we've learned from officers that the burglars were caught on surveillance video in both stores and they appear to be the same men. Now forensic investigators have been dusting for fingerprints. They've been looking for anything that will help them catch the two men who have been targeting these cell phone stores. Investigators tell us that this is the third time the two Burglars have hit the Richmond Road store in less than three weeks. In every case, we're told they break in from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. Investigators tell us that they broke in for the first time back on March 27th. We're told they were able to get away with thousands of dollars worth of phones. Police say before the burglars hit again this morning, the business owner locked those phones in a safe. Officers tell us so far they don't think the men got away with anything from the Richmond Road store and they are still checking inventory at the Nicholasville Road location. Police tell us that the burglary was caught on camera again. However, they don't have a detailed description of the suspects. We're told they typically wear red or black sweatshirts with white or black masks. Now, police tell me that after the two stores were hit this morning, they sent their officers out to watch the other T-Mobile stores in the area. I'm told the burglars did not show up, but police say they are still searching for them. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. 
Well, people who knew two men say they were friends, now one of them is dead. The other is charged with murder. Francisco Martinez Castillo's body was found last week in Silver Creek near Richmond. He was reported missing days before. Investigators charged Bill Chadwell with his murder. They say he admits to killing Martinez Castillo and had specific knowledge about the crime. Well, new this morning, state police pulled over a semi and found out it's stolen. James Morris and his passenger, Jerry Bowling, both face several charges. State police say a trooper saw a semi driving recklessly on the Howe Rogers Parkway. Investigators say the semi was stolen, and when they went to Morris's home, they found another stolen semi. Well, a Knox County daycare worker is accused of abusing a child in her care. State police charged 33-year-old Tracy Four with criminal abuse. State leaders say the Office of the Inspector General had opened an investigation into the daycare itself that resulted in that arrest. Well, a man is recovering this morning after being shot in the foot near the UK campus. Police there say someone fired several shots into a building on Red Mile Road. One person was in a bedroom when a bullet shattered their window. Another man said a bullet hit his foot. He was taken to UK, UK hospital to be treated. Police have not arrested the shooter. Well, Hillary Clinton is headed to Iowa. She took off from her New York home hours after announcing she's officially jumping into the presidential race. Susan McGinnis has more from Washington. Hillary Clinton got into a van and started driving west Sunday, stopping to meet this family from Michigan during a gas station stop in Pennsylvania. The former first lady hit the road right after she announced she's ready to run again. I'm getting ready to do something, too. I'm running for president. Clinton ended months of speculation after making her announcement Sunday in a campaign video. The video hints at the strategy she'll use in her second run for president. Every day Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. Instead of massive rallies, she intends to start off with a voter-centric approach, trying to connect with everyday Americans in small groups in small towns. Clinton's message will be a familiar one, helping middle-class families get ahead and reducing income inequality. Clinton's run for president comes with formidable challenges. She faces ongoing questions about the Benghazi attack and a personal email controversy. Republicans are ready. Hillary Clinton represents the worst of the Washington machine. This new ad starts airing in Iowa and three other early voting states today. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is expected to announce his candidacy for the Republican ticket today, joining Senators Rand Paul of Kentucky and Ted Cruz of Texas. The former first lady says she'll use the next six to eight weeks to ramp up her campaign. She plans her first big rally in May. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, Washington. Well, Clinton will be holding her first campaign event tomorrow in eastern Iowa. A Clinton aide says the van is named Scooby. That's a take on the mystery machine from the 1970s cartoon. You may be familiar with it, of Scooby-Doo. Well, today, an Ohio community will honor Lauren Hill, a teen basketball player who lost her battle with brain cancer last week. A uh, public memorial service for Hill is set for 7 o'clock tonight at Xavier University. A private visitation and funeral are scheduled for Wednesday. After learning her illness was terminal, the young teenager spent her final months raising awareness and money for cancer research. Several teams in Cincinnati paid a special tribute to Hill over the weekend. At the Mount St. Joseph University softball games, both teams wore specially made gray jerseys. Gray is the color of brain cancer awareness. The jerseys had never give up on the front and Hill's number 22 on the back. Lauren's basketball team was there. Other schools also held moment of silence at games over the past weekend in her honor. Well, if you travel the Mountain Parkway and would like to talk about its expansion, you have an opportunity to do that. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet will hold a public meeting. Two possible ways of creating a four-lane road between Sawyersville to Prestonsburg will be discussed. The Cabinet says it needs public feedback to help decide which option to take. The meeting is tomorrow evening at 5 at Prestonsburg Elementary School. Nearly 200 soldiers are returning to Fort Campbell this week from West Africa, where they have been helping to fight Ebola. Fort Campbell is expecting about 190 soldiers to return tomorrow to the post along the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. The soldiers have completed a 21-day period of health monitoring at Fort Bliss, Texas. 
So 6.39 is the time. If you can't make it to the Kentucky Derby this year, but you want to watch the race or make a bet, you have a chance to do that with a new app that will put the Run for the Roses right in the palm of your hand. Twinspires.com, owned by Churchill Downs, says the app will be available in the Apple Store. It allows customers to place wagers, watch live races, read handicapping information, stream replays, and more. In addition to the May 2nd Derby, betting is also available from the app for the Preakness Stakes, the Belmont Stakes, the Breeders' Cup, and other races. Well, happening today, a Kentucky college is set to start work on a new campus. Bluegrass Community and Technical College will break ground at the site of its new Georgetown campus today. Lieutenant Governor Kurt Llewellyn will be on hand for the ceremony. The new campus will serve more than 8,000 students. Let's get a check at traffic and see what things are looking like out on the roads this morning with Officer Don and live drive traffic. Good morning. Pothole repairs a little bit later on the circle, but for now, everything should be open uh, between Leestown and Versailles Road. Uh, inbound Leestown Masterson Station through the construction zone looks okay. We also checked Versailles Road approaching the circle. They're still working there, but no problems yet. Let's get a look outside and we'll show you what we're talking about as you get ready to head out the door this morning. With no wrecks in the way, it's a pretty smooth ride on South Broadway and High Street. And a ways map not showing any major issues. In fact, Richmond Road at the Circle still looks okay, and so does Alumni. It's steady between Manowar down to Tate's Creek. With a quick look at Tate's Creek Road, the slowest traffic there is that left turn lane to get you onto the inner loop of New Circle. Other than that, Tate's Creek's a straight shot toward downtown. Now back to you. All right, sounds good. Thanks so much, Don. More news from WKYT is on the way. So, how do you say Spider Man in French? How about Alain Robert? More on his death defying stunt that's ahead. Still watching back toward the west in the southern zones, and we'll be watching some moisture on the increase. That means rain chances in the forecast. But how much are we expecting? I'll take you into your latest forecast. Answer those questions coming up next.